This is America Weekend. I'm Mike Bennett. He's a weekly guest here. His name is Greg Quinn. He's a naturalist and farmer and responsible for bringing the black currants back to the U.S. market and, in fact, grows black currants on his farm in the Hudson Valley, New York. I'm Greg Quinn with this week's entry into Notes from the Current Farm. In keeping with the snowy northeast winter, the first day of spring here on the farm was celebrated with another five inches of snow. While the patches of bare ground are getting larger, there's still a fair amount of snow in the fields and in the woods, and the old farm pond behind the house is frozen, except for open water where the stream comes in off the hill at one end and flows over the old dam at the other. I took a walk in the woods yesterday at the top of the wildflower field, and while most things are still waiting for warmer weather to begin their spring performances, one plant is up and already producing pollen and nectar and a really rotten smell. Because of its unfortunate name and the odor of rotting flesh, many people dismiss the eastern skunk cabbage as little more than a stinky resident of swamps and marshes. This wetland wildflower, however, is one of the most interesting plants in the woods. When you happen upon a patch of them this time of year, the first thing you notice is that the snow is melted around each plant. Skunk cabbages are one of the very few plants that possess thermogenesis. This means they can actually raise their own temperature higher than their surrounding temperature, enabling this incredible plant to warm the ground around it and push its way through the surface when other plants are still trapped below the hard frozen crust. This is especially remarkable since with few exceptions, only warm blooded animals have this ability. The first part of the plant to push through the ground in the late winter is called the spathe. The spathe is a brownish purple shell-like pod with green splotches. <laughs> it looks like something one might expect to see on another planet in an episode of Star Trek. As the spathe gets bigger, the shell begins to reveal the spadix, which is a knob-like form covered with small yellow flowers. The stench that gives this plant its name is actually a defense mechanism that keeps the hungry animals from munching on it in late winter and early spring when the new green leaves emerge in a frozen world where food has become scarce. The bad smell doesn't dissuade bees and flowers, however. In fact, it attracts them to pollinate the little yellow flowers when almost nothing else is blooming. This humble little plant is the center of the frozen world for many species of insects, worms, slugs, snails, and millipeds, as well as small cold-blooded animals such as the red-backed salamander, the five-lined skink, the eastern worm snake, which all take up residence near the plant and under its giant foliage and soak up the skunk cabbage's warmth. The seeds of the skunk cabbage provide food for wood ducks and bobwhites, and the common yellow-throat warbler, which lives around wetlands, often builds their nest in the giant leaves of this marsh-loving plant. Another unique attribute is that this plant has contractile roots. As the roots grow, they expand down, and then they contract, pulling the plant into the earth. As it descends deeper and deeper, the leaves are actually pulled into the ground, and they have to grow longer to stay above the soil to take advantage of the sun and the oxygen. This unusual device allows the plant to live much longer than most plants. In fact, some biologists believe that the eastern skunk cabbage can live for thousands of years. There is nothing unremarkable in nature. Even a stinky little plant growing in a swamp is a world of mystery and wonder. For a podcast of this and previous notes from the current farm, and to find out why the healthiest berry in the world was outlawed in the U.S., go to Currents.com. That's Currents with an A. I'm Greg Quinn. Join me next week for another edition of Notes from the Current Farm. I'd like to hear your comments about Greg Quinn and his commentary on America Weekend. Send me an email at mikeaw at mikebennettradio.com. That's mikeaw at mikebennettradio.com. Or you can send me a tweet at mikebennett11 on Twitter. With naturalist and farmer Greg Quinn, I'm Mike Bennett. And you're listening to America Weekend.